Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here on the channel. I want to wish everyone a very belated Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I know it might be, you know, a little bit late. It is December 30th as I'm making this video. So, you know, it is going to be 2017 uh, very shortly here and I wanted to end off 2016 with a video, uh, sort of a follow-up video to my micro XP overview and in, uh, installation video that got uh, somewhat popular on this channel. What we're going to be taking a look at today is an operating system called the Tiny7. And essentially what this is, is it's kind of the same concept as Micro XP. Think of it as kind of Micro XP, but with Windows 7. It's, it's kind of the uh, same idea that the uh, developer of Micro XP had. I think that this might even be developed by the same person, but essentially, uh, this is a, uh, you know, tiny or miniaturized version of Windows 7 that is, you know, designed to, you know, take up a very small amount of hard drive space and use uh, a very little amount of system resources. So it would be, you know, something ideal for like older hardware or a PC, as I've said in my uh, micro XP video, with a, you know, smaller hard drive as this um, only needs about... Uh, 10 gigabytes of hard drive space, which is uh, less than the 16 gigabytes for the 32-bit of Windows 7 and the 20 gigabytes for the 64-bit of Windows 7. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to allow us to choose between 32 and 64-bit. This is going to be kind of a blind OS uh, install, which I've done, uh, you know, a lot on this channel. You know, I'm going to be kind of, you know, finding a lot of stuff out about this OS, you know, with you guys. Uh, I guess live on video. Um, I have looked up uh, some information uh, uh, about this. There's not a, a like official uh, page on this. The only one that I was able to find this guy's uh, blog spot post here, and he does say that it is it is a 32-bit. Uh, uh, edition of Windows 7 Ultimate that is fully activated. So I we might need to get a, a product key for this one because I, I did not download it from this site. But he says that there is a special note from Experience, and Experience was the guy that developed Micro XP, which you know leads me to you know think that this is the Tiny Seven is also made by by the same person. So he gives some uh, you know brief stats about the like. Uh, uh, OS install here. He says that the ISO file is 699 megabytes, which is exactly 600 uh, megabytes more than the micro XP ISO. Um, and he gives some uh, statistics on like how much RAM was used on the uh, first install. Uh, the only, um, well, the uh, final install size is only about two and a half gigabytes, which is, you know, significant, significantly less than a uh, full size Windows 7 install. And it only took around 10 to 15 minutes to install in VMware. Now the micro XP install took about five minutes, so this is going to take you know a little bit longer. Uh, we're going to be you know trying all that out. And he says that the uh, requirements here. Now of course this is nothing official, but he says that that the RAM is 512 megabytes. Uh, a CPU is a Pentium 4, and you need a 10 gigabytes uh, hard drive. And he also you know lists some you know very useful stuff here, which is stuff that is kept and installed uh, programs here as well. I assume this is going to be a very stripped down version of Windows 7, kind of like a micro XP was, where a lot of the uh, quote unquote unused or unnecessary uh, default Windows programs are gonna just you know straight up be taken out of here to save uh, space on the hard drive. Um, there is a, a download link here, but I was able to download it from a uh, OneDrive link which is actually the first link. If you look up Tiny7 on Google, it's probably like the first or second link that pops up. So, you know, I, I, I'm going to leave, you know, this link down below as well as the uh, OneDrive uh, file sharing link to uh, the OneDrive, or not to the OneDrive, to Tiny7 so that you can download it. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's just, you know, jump right into it and take a look at Tiny7 here. Um, I have also put the uh, minimum requirements that he listed in his blog post here. So, 512 megs, uh, we have a one, you know, a single core processor, obviously, and 10 gigs of uh, hard drive space. So, we're just going to start this up here. So, we are booting up here. You can see it immediately goes into the Windows uh, loading files screen. And uh, I'm going to, you know, the only... Uh, 
uh, modifications that I can think of that the author would have done to this is to kind of make it more uh, streamlined and stripped down, uh, kind of like the Micro XP installation. Um, but I'm not sure if, if there's going to be much that, you know, that is done to this, like a whole you know custom installation. Although you know we're going to see here. But so far, you know, we have uh, the same Windows 7 background and everything, so it looks, you know, pretty similar. Um, and I'm just going to guess that it's going to be uh, pretty much identical to the uh, official Windows 7 installation. And it jumps right into asking us where we want to install Windows. It doesn't go into the whole, uh, you know, like, uh, welcome to Windows, uh, put in your, you know, product key here. It doesn't ask you for any of that. It just jumps right in to asking you where you want to install it to so we're just going to select our uh, disk zero with 10 gigs of space uh, when we click next uh, it's going to copy windows files okay so it says that windows uh, needs to restart um, all of that took just over two minutes from the time that i uh, was able to start the timer which was just a little bit after it began to copy windows files we're back at completing installation we're just over three minutes now and uh, this should finish up pretty shortly here. We're at just over four minutes now, so kind of like a uh, micro XP, we're kind of at the tail end of the uh, like of the setup here, and it's kind of stopped at this one part. If you uh, recall, uh, at the or in the uh, micro XP video, it got to the very end, and the uh, progress bar had like a like an inch to go to get to the very end, and it was like stuck there for like a minute or two. So it's it's kind of like that here. Uh, I do you know think that that this part does take a little bit of time. So um, yeah, hopefully it'll uh, finish up here. Okay, we finally finished the final portion of the uh, Windows Seven. Uh, I guess first phase uh, of the setup. There, we're just over eight minutes on the timer, and it's going to. It said setup is going to continue after it restarts. So we're at the uh, boot up screen once again, and it didn't even ask us or ask me for my name or anything. It just went right to the login screen, and we are at nine minutes, just over nine minutes and 13 seconds. And I'm going to stop the timer once it uh, logs into the login screen. So that guy was pretty much right about taking uh, 15 minutes. Oh, I guess we're gonna start it up again because it's got to do some more stuff with uh, the uh, this like uh, you know a little CMD window here. So do not use this computer until Windows has restarted. Do not restart your Windows yourself during this time. So this is where it's going to probably use uh, like Windows Loader or something like that to try to uh, crack the Windows activation. Um, so yeah, I should probably say that uh, I'm not endorsing this. I'm making this video for educational purposes only. Uh, I do not do this yourself. Um, it is illegal. And uh, as I've said, this video is for uh, educational purposes only. So um, we're going to click on OK here. It's going to uh, continue with what it's doing up here. Um, so, so far we've got a uh, experience folder, which is the name of the author. And we've got a bunch of stuff in here. I, I guess I shouldn't really be using it at this time because it's you know told me not to. Um, so we've got a couple more things that it's just going to apparently do all automated without me having to touch anything. All right, so we are back. It did a ton of uh, automated stuff. The timer finished with just over 13 minutes. I feel like I said just over a lot, but 13 minutes, 19 seconds um, is what we are at. So yeah, that that guy was was pretty much right in his uh, little thing where he said it would take 10 to 15 minutes. That was pretty much on the dot. But you can see here that. Um, well, I'm not sure if I'm going to kind of show all of the footage from the last you know, little clip, but basically what it was doing is it was doing a bunch of automated stuff uh, in the CMD, um, and it did a it installed a, a bunch of uh, updates, programs, and like tweaks and things like that, and it also set uh, a lot of the Windows options. You can see here that the folder like there's no side panels or anything like that. It's very you know minimal. Um, a lot of this stuff has been taken out. We also have a, a custom desktop wallpaper. Um, the arrow theme, I think it might still be in here, but it looks like it's gone uh, by default here. Um, but actually, I don't think the arrow theme can run on only five, 512 megs of RAM, so it's not going to let me uh, set it as that anyway. Um, you can see that the uh, taskbar here has been set to the uh, 
uh, smaller taskbar variant here. Um, so yeah, that is that is pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm going to see if I can set this to uh, 1080p here. I should be able to. So we're going to go 1080p. We'll apply and keep changes. So we're going to do that. And now the uh, experience little thing is gone. That's kind of funny. Uh, it also said something about um, when it was doing all that automated stuff. It said something about uh, removing a watermark. I think that might have something to do with the Windows activation. Um, but let's just see if I uh, open up the uh, Windows activation thing. It does say Windows is, is, uh, is activated. So it was able to um, get past that uh, successfully. So you can see here that... We are running Windows 7 Ultimate on 512 megs of RAM, of course, with a six-core processor here. That's the one thing that I cannot change. Um, with a and so it was a 32-bit operating system, and of course, it has the randomly generated uh, computer name here um, because it you know, did not allow me to change that. I can of course change that if I wanted to, and my username. Let's see what that is, if that is a uh, randomly generated or not, if it lets me open the start menu. And my username is uh, the administrator account, so that's what uh, it logs me into. It does not allow me to make uh, a whole separate account during setup. It kind of just bypasses all of that to save time and, of course, to save space on the hard drive. Uh, we're currently using um, 7, well, we have 7.19 gigs free of the 10 gig hard drive space. So we're only using 2.7 gigs out of the uh, 10 gig dry space. So if you just wanted to get Windows on your PC, you'd probably only need like a three to five gig hard drive. Of course, those are probably gonna be super old hard drives. Um, but, or, you know, you could put this on something uh, like a USB flash drive or an SD card or, 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 or something like that. That would actually be, you know, something cool to do in uh, like a future video to see if we could, you know, install this on uh, like an SD card or uh, like a USB flash driver or, or you know something like that because it takes you know a very uh, small amount of space um, and again the uh, Windows um, Explorer has been uh, very stripped down it's you know very minimalized um, here as well we'll open up a uh, Winver you can see that this is version 6.1 build 7600 it's just registered to Windows user because it didn't you know allow me to change that or anything and if I open up the start menu, a lot of these programs, uh, if I go into all programs, you can see that it is again very stripped down. It did install some third party programs such as uh, WinRAR here and the Foxit Reader. So some you know very nice programs uh, because I you know pretty much um, if you're going to be like unzipping files, you're gonna either need WinRAR or 7-zip. So it's very nice that he you know put that uh, in here. Uh, this is a very useful tool. I'm sure everybody knows what this is. I don't know why that I'm you know going through and telling you what it is, but uh, it is nice that uh, you know he has that in here for us. Um, but yeah, it's very a lot of the stuff is uh, empty and uh, you know startup maintenance is empty. Games there's just Games Explorer. Uh, none of the Windows Seven games are in here. Um, I'm assuming that the Games Explorer he was not able to uh, remove, so he just had to leave that in here. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, the the Foxit reader again. I think this is like a uh, uh, like a PDF reader. Yeah, so it's a, uh, a PDF reader of some sorts. So we can open up open it up here. Um, so yeah, that is that is nice that he includes that. I'm I'm assuming it's a very uh, minimal. It takes up uh, a small amount of space. Everything in the accessories folder looks to be here, uh, at least from what I can see, as well as in the system tools folder that looks you know pretty much normal. Um, he did not add a, th a third party browser such as Chrome or Firefox. He just left uh, Internet Explorer in here, so that's somewhat of a, of a downside. I'm not sure why he did that. I assume it's you know just to save space to make it as minimal as possible. Um, but you know, IE this is what IE seven or eight. Um, it's probably not not that terrible. Um, so you know you, you can use it to you know download uh, Chrome or uh, you know Firefox, which is probably the the most common thing that IE is used for. Uh, you know, especially like the older versions. So we've also got this folder on the desktop here called Experience. And if we open this up, this is, you know, uh, Experience is the author's name of uh, Tiny7 as well as MicroXP. 
Um, but in here we've got uh, some shortcuts that he's made to uh, four of, I don't know if you would say the most commonly used, but just some of uh, the Windows tools here. We have uh, the Group Policy Editor, Event Viewer, Disk Management, and Add or Remove Programs. And if we go in here, you can just kind of see how minimalized that this edition of Windows is. There's only five things in here. We've got, uh, you know, Adobe Flash Player, uh, a program called Everything 1.2.1, uh, Foxy Reader, Hashtab, and Rin, uh, RAR, WinRAR. Uh, we've also got some folders here, and some of these are uh, install files to other programs such as Komodo Firewall. Uh, we've got a link to, which I will believe allow you to download that, uh, which is one of the best, I mean, he, he just says here, one of the best software-based firewalls. So this is just a, a link that'll take you to the download page for that. Um, and, and we've got some of the other, like uh, this uh, desktop icon layout. Uh, from from what it looks like it's a program that will actually save your desktop icon layout um, if I open up the uh, uh, readme file here you, you can see he uh, you know kind of tells you a little bit about it here um, and it, it just basically saves your current desktop icon layout and if you install something like a, a new video card and it uh, installs like new drivers and you're worried about as he says here if you're worried about the icon layout being reset this you know this program will keep basically like a little snapshot of it which is you know pretty nice that he uh, adds that in here um, and a, a lot of these are just uh, pretty simple batch files that he has added in here we've got two in here that'll enable or disable hibernation on the computer we've got one that will uh, enable quick access we've got one that will back up your uh, registry We've got a, a TCP IP patcher, which is a uh, you know little program here. And he tells you a little bit about it in there. And we've also got a uh, thing that will allow you to set your user password, as there is no password set on the uh, administrator account by default. You have to set it. So this just makes it a little bit easier for you to you know set that. As all you have to do is uh, you know run this. It'll open up the uh, you know user accounts uh, properties panel, and you can set your uh, password from here. So that is uh, all of the stuff in this folder right here. And we've also got uh, a little program that will enable uh, the uh, quick launch toolbar on the, on the uh, taskbar for you if you wanted it. So that is very nice um, that he has you know, added all these uh, little tweaks in here for you. But that is essentially going to wrap it up for this uh, brief little video on Tiny7. Uh, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to uh, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.